Stage managers love a good Excel spreadsheet. So let's make a tracking document for your money, a run sheet for your bank account, a daily call for your income. Don't run away, but I'm talking about making a budget. My name is Kent, and this is your Half Hour Call. Attention cast and crew, this is your Half Hour Call. Half hour to the top of the show. Half hour. What is up, my friends, and welcome to part two of Let's Talk About Money, giving you a jump start on becoming a financially healthy stage manager. This week, we're talking about budgeting, and I'm super excited to be collaborating with Mel from Broke Girl Rich. Part of the issue with the personal finance advice available on the internet is that it doesn't work really well for freelance stage managers whose job can take them anywhere in the world at a moment's notice with wildly fluctuating incomes and expenses. Broke Girl Rich is a blog that is an amazing resource for financial advice that is actually relevant to our lives. And I'm super excited for Mel to share with you some of the things she's learned over the course of her career about personal finance for stage managers like us. But if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Kent and you are watching Half Hour Call where we're dedicated to shining the spotlight on technical theater. So if you want how-to videos, interviews with industry leaders, or general theater updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss anything. I'd be willing to bet that none of you would ever dream of walking into a rehearsal without a daily call. I'm also sure no one would disagree that a rehearsal with a daily schedule is going to accomplish more in the same number of rehearsal hours than a rehearsal without a daily schedule. I've got a secret. A daily call is just a budget for your rehearsal time. Or a budget is just a daily call for your money. Either way, going in with a plan will allow you to get more use out of whatever resources you do have, whether that's rehearsal hours or dollar bills. There's a saying that if you don't tell your money where to go, you'll wonder where it went. And yeah, it can be incredibly stressful and frustrating to make a daily schedule when you don't have enough rehearsal hours to accomplish everything you need to accomplish for the day. But that doesn't mean that you should ignore the problem and just wing it. So to me, budgets equal freedom because they give you back control. And that is a really useful thing, both just in my personal life and also in my career choices. When my finances are more under control, it gives me more opportunities as well with work because I can know whether I have to take a really high paying gig right now or if I can do something that might pay a little less but teach me a new skill or might be with a really fun group of people. When I'm just sitting there and tallying up like what my rent is and what my utilities are and how I'm going to pay these things every month, it doesn't initially look like it's really providing me freedom. But in the long run, knowing those numbers and being in better control of them does provide that freedom. At its most basic, a budget is just a list of money coming in and money going out, knowing what your income is and what your expenses are. The most effective budgets are zero sum budgets, meaning that your income is equal to your expenses with nothing left over. And no, this doesn't mean that you get to spend every single dollar that you make, just that all of your money is accounted for. You know where it came from and you know where it's going. Investments in a retirement account or savings for an emergency fund are considered expenses for this type of budget. And I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. There are a lot of great resources on the internet that can help you get started making a budget. But the problem with a lot of these resources is that they don't account for freelancers like most of us stage managers. Most of these resources don't account for the fact that gaps in employment are a regular and expected part of our career, or that our expenses can wildly fluctuate just like our income. This is where Mel from Broke Girl Rich can help. So as freelancers, a really handy tool to keep in mind is having two budgets ready. Your traditional one that's got everything you'll find on the internet, all of your needs like your rent and your utilities and all of your wants like Netflix and cocktails with friends and going clothes shopping once in a while, and also your plans for the future like retirement and emergency savings. But for us, it's also very handy to have a survival budget, which is the bare bones absolute minimum amount that you need to get by every month. And knowing that number gives you an idea of how much you know you have to make no matter what. And you can also see what the gap between the two is and make plans for the future to aim to bring in the amount that you want for your comfortable budget too. Imagine you're running a show that takes 10 crew members. For one performance, you're suddenly down to three crew members. And for whatever reason, you're not allowed to cancel the show. What can you eliminate from their workload or nix from the run sheet that doesn't affect safety or the actual telling of the story? On the other hand, what is non-negotiable and absolutely needs to make it on that stage in order for the story to be effectively told or for people to be safe? This is the mindset for your survival budget, but instead of crew members, it's dollars, and instead of set pieces or props, it's expenses. I start this budget with the four walls, which are food, but not restaurants, utilities, shelter, and transportation. What is the bare minimum that you need to satisfy each of these areas? In times of hardship, like 
a global pandemic, can you move back in with your parents or are you on the hook for a 12 month lease? Then add in your other essentials like insurance, medical care, minimum debt payments, and if you're an independent contractor, taxes. The goal is to never actually live off of that budget, but it having the minimum number of dollars that it takes to sustain your life and stay afloat is really important information to have. This is the budget you'll reference when making decisions like, can I afford to take this internship? Or when you're setting the pace for financial goals like retirement savings or emergency funds, or, you know, 10 months into a global pandemic that shuts down your entire industry, stuff like that. Budget number two is your actual working budget. This is a lot more relaxed and hopefully a lot closer to your day-to-day -day reality. This is also where personal goals and preferences come into play. So how fast do you wanna save up your emergency fund or what luxuries can you absolutely not live without? Going back to the daily call metaphor, this is where you're adding in your 10 minute breaks, your lunch breaks and your days off. Though you can theoretically function without them in order for your schedule or your budget to be sustainable, you need breaks. To make a budget, you need to figure out what you're spending now. Common practice is to print out your most recent three bank statements or credit card statements and track your spending that way. Although at this exact moment in time, perhaps starting at the three months before March of 2020, might be a more complete picture of your spending habits. Although for me personally, I know these last 10 months have taught me a lot about what's important to me and what I can spend money on versus where I can cut back without missing it too much. So once you've actually sat down and figured out where your money is going, you can look at the most effective way to apply some hacks to save some money. And there are two different ways to do this. If you're doing pretty okay financially, you might look at some, some of the smaller expenses and realize, oh, I regularly go to Target, or I do actually buy a lot of coffee. Personally, sometimes I buy way too many candles. So now you can use this information. You may have been unaware that you spend this much money there, or you may be totally aware of it, and in which case, if you're doing okay financially, you can look at how to save a little more money on the things you're just going to spend money on anyway. You might go to raise.com and buy discounted gift cards if you regularly go to a certain store, or you might sign up for their loyalty card. These are like really small and easy moves that can actually save you some money if you see that you frequent certain places regularly. Alternatively, you might find that you are a little tighter on cash than expected and you might want to look at what your biggest expenses are and see how you can cut those down. So maybe it's time to take in another roommate, maybe you might find your debt is overwhelming and it's time to look at debt consolidation, which can be really handy for anyone who has a lot of credit card or medical debt. Um, there's great companies like debt.com that can consolidate your debt for you. And a lot of them also provide debt counseling, which will help you figure out in some cases how you got into that situation and how to avoid it in the future. Um, but you can use the information on the budget that you've put together to figure out the most effective ways to use your time to lower some of the expenses. Even though stage managers are notorious for loving a well-designed Excel spreadsheet, there are also a lot of apps that can help you track your expenses and keep your budget. Apps like Mint, Personal Capital, You Need a Budget, or Every Dollar can connect to your bank account and credit cards and automatically populate a lot of the information you would otherwise need to do by hand. Plus, a lot of them can give you alerts when your spending in certain categories is approaching or exceeds your budgeted amount. Check out the description below for the links to the Broke Girl Rich budget template, as well as some of the apps that I've just mentioned. On the other end of the technology spectrum, and best suited for those who tend to fall victim to impulse purchases, you can use cash envelopes to really put a stop to excessive spending. This is where you withdraw your allocated spending amount in cash and separate it into envelopes for each category. So that way, when you go to the grocery store, you grab your groceries cash envelope and you can only spend whatever money is in that envelope. A common misconception that I had at first too is that budgets are frozen or rigid, but in reality, they're a living document. You can and should make adjustments as life happens. Perhaps you'll find new and innovative ways to reduce spending without impacting your quality of life. Or you'll find out that, no, you really do need that daily caffeinated beverage and cutting it out was creating a hostile work environment for your coworkers. Hypothetically, the point is you can and should readjust and reassess as your needs and situation change. One thing to look out for that is especially dangerous is lifestyle inflation. This is where your spending naturally increases along with your income. Not only can this quickly eat up your additional income, preventing you from putting more away for your financial goals, but in our line of work especially, it can really bite you in the butt. If the Broadway show you just landed unexpectedly closes in two months, you might be in some hot water with that lease on the fancy new apartment you just moved into. 
Now that's not to say that you shouldn't enjoy the perks of your new salary, just be sure not to steal from your future self in the process. Instead, consider making a wish list of sorts for unexpected income. That way, if you get a bump in pay for Tech Week or you sell an unexpected number of stage manager ducks available now at kenjamescollins.com store, making decisions about what to do with that money before you even have it will make it that much easier to stick to your plan. Sort of like making a list and not going to the grocery store hungry. So I guess for me, for budgets, I really have two final thoughts. Um, a lot of things about personal finance, I find, are a lot like a stage manager's kit because you've got all sorts of things in there, but you probably don't use them all the time. And a lot of personal finance things are the same way. that You learn a new skill and you put it in your head and you use it when you need to. And with budgets, I find they're not always the most fun thing to do, but they're really useful. And I don't do one every month anymore, but I do one whenever my financial situation changes. And I'll do it for a month or two or three to make sure I'm still on track. And it's been really useful for me that way. Um, and my other thought about budgets are that if you're hesitating to get started doing one, you really have to know where you are to know where you can go. So for that, I would encourage you to give a budget a try. Let me know in the comments down below if you have a budget and what system you use to keep track of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and a huge thank you to Mel from Broke Girl Rich for collaborating with me on this video. There are links in the description below to some resources to delve further into the nitty gritty of budgeting, but hopefully this gives you a starting point to know where your money is coming from and where your money is going. So get out there and stage manage the crap out of your finances. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. My name is Kent, and this has been your Half Hour Call. This snazzy feathered production assistant, as well as other cool stage management merchandise, is now available at kentjamescollins.com store. Link in the description below.